Good afternoon. Uh, this is the last session before lunch. Uh, we are going to talk about talent management in digital age today. Uh, my name is Asman. Uh, I have been working in HR more than 15 years. And I'm very excited to, um, to support you in this journey of learning and uh, inspiration because we have two very important guests today. First, I would like to introduce them. Uh, Michelle is from Amazon. Uh, she has been working in HR uh, more than 20 years. Uh, she is leading a lot of uh, talent management, HR transformation programs. And he has extensive background in technology, especially in HR strategies and leadership development. So uh, she will provide valuable insights to us about talent management, how they do these processes in uh, Amazon. We have also Ihop. Uh, Ihop is also an accomplished HR uh, professional. Uh, he has been working for different companies in several sectors. Now he's uh, working in uh, GE Healthcare. Uh, he's also an entrepreneur. He's a founder of um, Talent Checks, right? Yes. Uh, he's the founder of Talent Checks and innovative reference checking platforms. So with his experience, he is also going to tell us um, how digital transformation, uh, talent development. So welcome both to Istanbul and to our panel. Thank you. Uh, first, Michelle, I would like to start with you. We all know Amazon. It's a very innovative technology-based company. So how do you use your own knowledge to excel talent management in Amazon? What are the examples or processes you can share with us? Yes, so in true Amazon fashion, um, we didn't have a platform or anything that we could use. So we designed our own system to manage our talent management process and it's called Hire. Uh, unfortunately, you can't buy it. Uh, I don't know whether you might be able to in the future, but today you can't. Um, and the system we developed is purely because um, we deal with millions and millions of applications every year all over the world. And we needed a platform that essentially gives us the, um, the availability of resources across borders and different countries and be able to support our workforce staffing teams. Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, artificial intelligence today and um, I can tell you that we don't use AI at the moment in any of our hiring processes. It's all screened by actual workforce staffing people who review all of the CVs that come in. But we have different processes for our tier one entry level people that enter the business versus our manager level people that come in. So tier one go through a very different process, but again, it's all dealt with by people and it's, it tends to be less interviewing from that. It's more question based and checking based and making sure people meet the criteria. And then you go through an uh, induction day where you would go through that process. But the system itself in hire, it basically, it manages the, system, the process end to end. It allows us to report on it because we are a data driven company. And the data that we're able to pull from that will give us real insights in terms of location, trend history, where we get attract our applicants from. Um, it gives the history of the applicant as well. So when we get people that apply in for Amazon multiple times, we're able to see all of that information in that one place. Um, but the biggest thing that I've learned with Amazon versus any other company I've worked for, and I've worked for two of the big global companies, is how we actually go through that interview process uh, to remove the bias. Because when we actually um, do any panel interviews, we go through a process where essentially we don't get to see the feedback from anybody else that's on the panel. We do the panel ourselves. It's all in line with our leadership principles. We all ask different questions. And then basically you only get to see what your other panelists think of the candidate once you've actually submitted your decision. You're committed to that in terms of you're saying you're gonna hire or not hire that person. And then you get to see what everybody else says. But also thinking about uh, external people coming in, we also have have people that's called bar raisers who sit on our panels to make sure they really moderate the process. So before I was even allowed to interview, bearing in mind I've worked in HR for over 20 years, um, I had to go through an extensive interview process. So essentially I was trained for five to six hours on the hiring develop uh, the best leadership principle. 
I had to do a test at the end to make sure I understood the learning principles. Then I've got to shadow other interviewers that have been with Amazon for a long period of time. And then after that process, then I actually get the opportunity to interview, which is very, very different. I would have also attended the Amazon culture immersion training, which is called day one. It's extensive for four days to fully understand the business and the culture, which no other business I've ever worked for has ever made me do that. I've literally on day one, I work in HR, I'm going to interview, which is great. So what I would say for anybody looking for tools, we've built our own system, but make sure the platform that you decide on actually gives you what you need in terms of making sure removing bias. It actually streamlines your processes and automates where you can, but ultimately you need to innovate because technology is changing. We don't use AI right now. I'm not saying we won't in the future, but at the moment we don't, but think about how you can integrate into your systems. Thank you. Uh, we talk about this candidate part and talent management some uh, parts. And yeah, I would like to ask you about uh, employee experience because in the morning, everyone has just mentioned about how important it is. How do you use these kind of technology tools to personalize and to have a better um, employee experience or candidate experience? How can we do it? Um, amazing question. And, and first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, right? Yes, great. <laughs> um, so basically, the, the way that we look at technology integration into the employee life cycle starts actually with the employees being candidates. So at the very beginning of the process, when they are applying for the job, how they go through the application process, how they are getting interviewed, how they are getting onboarded and afterwards, the development. So the whole hire to retire process, if you will. And um, there are lots of technologies actually that HR started to use over the past few years in order to be able to personalize this experience and make it as efficient as possible. And I'd love to tap into a few of those um, technologies or platforms that actually we have implemented over the past years Starting with, you know, very simple chatbots on the, on the uh, websites. And when we are using those chatbots, we start to train them on the knowledge base that we are having as an organization, who we are, what we do, what are our products. And then we are trying as well to add a little bit of intelligence so it can help candidates find the jobs. So basically the full journey of a candidate can start and finish in the chat box. So asking questions about the organization, where like, you know, the software engineering jobs are, and then afterwards, can you help me applying for those jobs? And the chatbot answers yes, and they upload the resume, uh, they upload the resume, and then afterwards the application is concluded. But once actually those um, applications comes in, one of the major challenges that talent acquisition and recruitment teams are facing, and um, it is increasing every day. So in average, a recent study has been highlighting for every single job, there is more than 250 applications. And for actually, if we are looking at an average organization, um, like again, mid-size or a big organization, recruiters usually sit between anything, between 15 to 25 positions. Multiply this by 250 applications and then you would know how much effort, manual effort that they will need to do. So uh, while I definitely agree with Amazon's um, high human touch into the process, there are technologies where it can just help you not really dispositioning candidates or removing candidates from the process, but at least give you an indication to what extent they are mapped to your job description, what you're looking for, your values, and so on. And then give the recruiter the choice whether they would like to move forward with them or not. And we've implemented actually one of those platforms back in, in one of my previous organizations, and it has been super helpful, just like giving A, B, C, and D for candidates based on like, you know, suitability based on the job description. And additional to that, actually using AI and machine learning with this platform, it helped us as well to look into existing candidates in the database. Um, so think of Ehab applied to a job in your organization six months ago, and he's already engaged with your brand. He already want to join your organization and he already applied for a job. 
And then he was not selected, he was not processed, and then there's another job that matches EHAB's profile. But EHAB might or might not see the job. So what you would do is basically this AI and machine learning platform will, for a lack of a better word, will fetch EHAB's profile for you and say that besides those who applied, there are people existing in the platform who can help you with that. In addition to that, it does what we call it internal fetching. So it looks at internal candidates, your internal labor market who are already internal employees willing to grow. And again, think of the growth and the development of your people and start to like surface those for the HR and for the business people. Um, so now you can make the best use of your internal labor market, your external candidates, and make sure that you are sh choosing the right, again, with all the uh, processes that Michelle mentioned, you are selecting the best fit for the position. But then now they are in the organization, they accepted the profile, there are lots of technologies that can make sure, like again, between the moment that they accept an offer, till they join the organization, which is in some market can be like three to six months for the notice period. So how to make sure that they are engaged, how to make sure that they are continuously getting updates, doing tasks. So you don't lose them for the competition. So I've been talking with one of my um, team members who's leading the hiring in India. So in India, they have three months notice period. And one of the challenges, because of the fierce competition, they are seeing around 18% of the people after they accept the offer during the pre-boarding process, they lose those candidates. Oh. So how can we address that through technology? Again, knowing that you have resources, limited resources, so you wouldn't have your recruiter after they finished already the, the, the job to have them like, you know, regularly connecting with all those candidates. So, so technology comes really handy when it comes to that. And then there are lots of technologies as well that we've implemented in um, like again, J and J, for example, when we have been looking at skill sets and how can we map the, uh, how can we first understand what are the skill set that we have in the organization? And for, for those of you who are working in big organizations, you will, you will realize that you, you don't really know how many people who has project management, who, how many people who has JavaScript and so on. So there are technologies that actually put the ownership on the employees for them to start put those um, skill sets and then you can have like a heat map. So mm -hmm. the moment that you would like to work on a specific project that require those skill set, with a click of a button, you will see where those employees are, what are their locations, and even what are the types of projects that they have worked on. So um, like again, in summary, from like, you know, start to finish, when you start to implement all of those different um, technologies, it's not only about efficiency and uh, time saving, but as well as the experience itself mm -hmm. and making sure that you are drive this for candidates and for employees after they join. Thank you. These were the great examples how we can use the technology. But when I just attend these kind of conferences and listen to all these, I'm just a little bit concerned sometimes because there is a lot of new trends and new technologies. And I don't know how we are going to catch up with all these as HR professionals and also as the organizations. So uh, how do you mitigate uh, this knowledge and skill gaps within your organization? How uh, can you be sure that we are up to date with all these technology and trends in the organizations? Yeah, um, so for Amazon, um, from the day you join, we call it a day one culture. And the reason we call it a day one culture is we want everybody to see each day as day one and to innovate. So we use a system called Kaizen, which is a Japanese word for innovation. And essentially, we want everybody, and no matter what job you do, whether or not you're a tier one associate who's actually packing a box or unpacking a box, to look at that process and think about how we improve, or whether or not what part of the business. So we also have, we invest heavily in learning and development. Um, so everybody has the opportunity to get involved with what's called career choice. And basically you can learn pretty much any skill, whether it's to learn to write JavaScript or whether it's to be a, a lorry driver or whether it's to work in HR, we pay for that training. 
and we fund that. And then at the end of the training, you can decide as an individual, do you want to stay with Amazon or do you want to go and use that skill elsewhere? And we don't ask you to repay that money. We invest in our employees and that's how we want to become Earth's best employer because we do that level of investment. And we also do lots of training. So I think every day we have a system called, which is an online system, which trains me in pretty much everything every day, whilst also um, doing what's called office hours. So no matter what we do, whether or not we're launching a new system, it's a new innovation, once we've launched, we let people drop into sessions to find out more, because we might have delivered the training, we might have had it, and we might be thinking, goodness, I've got a question. So you, you go to these office hours sessions where somebody's going to be able to help you and really offer the support and making sure we have those safety nets in place for everybody. Great. What about you, Eho? Yes. So um, I, I would say that organizations should always have a bare minimum of uh, tech savviness um, in all the employees. So you need to first to understand what is this bare minimum is as an organization and make sure that all your employees are, are trained on that. Um, one of actually the examples that I really like in, in one of the organization, what we've done is reverse mentoring. So normally now you have lots of Gen Zs and millennials in the, in the organizations and um, reverse mentoring is basically they are mentoring older colleagues on new technologies and the usage of those new technologies. And they get like mentoring on business on like, you know, um, day to day from, um, from their like again, elder colleagues. So, um, so I think that this is, this is one of the things that you can leverage your existing already talent pool or like employees in order to make sure that everyone has a standard of, um, uh, of knowledge around technologies as well as like the continuous um, mm -hmm. education and training and development that we are, we are doing. So um, we are just starting, for example, with NTA um, a back to basics training where basically we're taking them through all the different technologies how to use them because one of the challenges is that organizations spend millions of dollars on technologies but then the adoption rate and the return on investment on those technologies not realized and sometimes it's just like for the lack of knowledge or like i don't know how to use it no one told me how to use it and that's why like you know i'd rather do what i used to do yeah, that's very important, I think, key point. So before we close the session, do you have uh, one last message uh, for our guests? Um, I think for me, technology is here to stay. Um, so I've worked for technology companies for the last about 10 years now. And, you know, we, we're going to continue to evolve. Be ready, be, uh, embrace it. We need to go with it. And it will make our lives a lot easier. If I think about the systems I have in Amazon now, it's very efficient, it's very user-friendly, and it's all about user experience. So think about what you can do, how you can bring it into your business, and make sure that you are utilizing technologies that answer your problem statement in terms of what you're looking to solve. Thank you. Yes, uh, I agree. And I think that um, that last part on what you really as an organization need, because every day there will be a different technology, a new technology that's coming up. And you need to make sure that it serves a purpose. It's really like kind of fit for you as, as an organization. And um, I always love this word of like, you know, less on more, uh, spending less or like as doing less on more, um, uh, like doing more on less, I'm sorry. Uh, because this is basically like, again, making sure that you are laser focused, you are like, you know, um, driving what really important and resonates for you and for your business as well. Um, so start with what the business needs and then look at what is the gap that you have from a tech perspective to achieve that and look at what are those few vendors who can actually um, touch base. So yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and sharing your experience with us. So thank you, thank so you very much for joining us. Enjoy lunch. Thank you. Thank you.